This is a special race. moment on a special night. So you're a big man for GAA? I am. Yes. And who's your favourite manager? David Fitzgerald. David Fitzgerald, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like you to come. Maybe speak to the team before we go out. I hope my speech will make a difference. What if I lose my lines? What do I do? If you have a fear, be brave and just do it. When Michael met Davey, Monday, August 5th on RTE1. For Roland. How's it going, everyone? You're very welcome to uh, another Let It Go Spudland. Uh, let's do another short uh, podcast. Um, sorry, I'm distracted because the thing is messy. Um, desk. I want to talk about uh, when Michael met Davy. This was a, an RT documentary that came out uh, two weeks ago. And um, it came out on the bank holiday Monday, so whenever that was. Actually, no, it's before that. Came out before, yeah, yeah, it must have been Ben Collin Master. It came out ages ago, then over two weeks ago. Uh, it was, um, yeah, it came out before the, the Wexford Tipperary uh, All Ireland semi final. That's important because, um, uh, this is a sports style kind of documentary. It isn't sports, it's not a sports documentary, but it's it revolves around sports, you know. So it's about, um, uh, you'll have heard in the uh, intro there, the trailer. That um, actually, I'm gonna have to explain this for people who are outside of Ireland. So we had this thing in Ireland called, even though I'm not in Ireland, uh, there is this thing in Ireland. Uh, it's the longest running late night TV talk show, something I think, it's called a late late show, and uh, uh, the host is a fellow called Ryan Tuberty. He's also on uh, RT Radio. But anyway, um, he. Uh, not he, every year they put on this uh, Lele Toy Show in the run-up towards Christmas. And it's this huge big event in uh, Irish television. Everyone, uh, everyone, sorry, everyone has uh, good memories or kind of nostalgic and good memories of this because it's usually the first kind of TV program that you're allowed to stay up late and watch because it's, it doesn't finish until about half 11 or midnight, I think. I'm not too sure, I don't remember. But it goes on for a couple of hours and it's just about like, the latest toys that are coming out and there's, there's things about books. There's a lot of uh, um, musical guests who are usually uh, kids as well, up to kind of teenage age, big song and dance numbers. And yeah, it's just, a, I mean, it's just a crack because there's so many uh, new toys that are brought out and kids come on, they play with them and then the host plays and it makes a fool of themselves. The kids make a fool of the host. Blah, blah, blah. But anyway, uh, a couple of years ago, there was a fella on it called a uh, kid on it called Michael O'Brien. I think he was 11 at the time. Yeah, he's just gone 11 because he was 11 in this documentary, which was made not that too long uh, after it. And he came on and he was um, he was visually impaired. Now, I don't know, it, it doesn't go into, the, into it in the documentary how bad his vision is, but suffice to say, he can't see much or anything. It actually doesn't even say, I don't know if he's totally blind or like very, very blind. But anyway. Visually impaired is what we're going to have to go with. And he was reviewing a book in Braille, and Tuberty asked him or said something like, oh, you were a big, you'll have heard it, uh, you were a big GA fan or something. You're a big GA fan. Who's your favorite manager? So his favorite manager turns out to be uh, Davy Fitz. He's calling her David, Fitz, David Fitzgerald. He was a goalkeeper, hurling goalkeeper for Clare when they won their first All Ireland in 80 something years. He's gone on to manage Clare. Uh, Waterford, and now he's the manager of Wexford, and he's a bit of a dis- divisive figure in Ireland. Either kind of either love him or hate him. I suppose in a footballing term terms, he'd be a bit like um, I suppose he'd be a bit like Jose Mourinho. You know, um, he very much instills belief in the team that he's managing that it's it's the world against us kind of thing. You know, and uh, he hasn't quite done that at Wexford because Wexford people are so fucking laid back. We're practically lying down. You know. But uh, but he's he's a big hit in Wexford. Everyone everyone loves him. I do. I think he's, I've always liked him. I mean, not I mean, since the days he was hurling, it was him and the Wexford goalkeeper and uh, Damien Fitzhenry. They were the, probably the best goalkeepers that have been around since the sixties or seventies. Anyway, they were, from, they were fantastic players. And Davy Fitz was just out with his world. Um, and then he's been a very good manager. He he's won with Clare. He came. Did he win Waterford? He came very close. I don't remember. Probably won with Waterford in All Ireland. Um and shit, look that up. No, uh, no, no. He won. He won the Munster final with, with Warford. And Wexford, he won the Leinster Cup. 
just a few weeks back. I uh, lost in the semi final tip. But anyway, uh, Davy comes on the list. Surprises this kid comes on a late age one, and he's so he's so impressed with, with 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 young Michael that he says, "Look, you come down and give my boys a, a team talk," which is like for an eleven year old. That's like, like could you imagine? Doctor to put in a football. Could you imagine like you know? Jose Mourinho, me too, as an 11 year old, and says, I like the color of your jib, boy. <laughs> come and give my team, a, come and give Man United a, a, a team talk. Okay, Mourinho is not a not manager of Man United anymore, but he was, you know. Can you imagine, like, it's crazy, you know. What I loved about the doc, documentary is that you see, you see David Fitzgerald just totally falling in love with this kid, you know. It's heartwarming. It's like, because we have this image of Davy Fitz as being this kind of gruff, mean, kind of Napoleonic figure. You know, he's short, angry little fella, a bit like himself. <laughs> and he says he's short, he's angry, he gives out a lot. He gets sent off a lot for, you know, round with uh, with uh, uh, referees and stuff like that. So he's he's boisterous and he's, he's a pain in the arse, you know. But you can see this kind of softer side to him that he doesn't really let get shown in the media a lot. But you see, what he does, he just kind of, he, he falls in love with this, with this, this Michael. And he just kind of takes him under his wing and he's very kind to him, very nice to him. And it's just, it's just lovely to see, you know. Um, uh, yeah, let's take another like, clip from it then. Since we caught up with G? Yeah. Three months, I think. Is it a while, it is? It is a while, yeah. Man, you're, he's looking smart today, I'll tell you. He's looking slick. Huh? You got started with the suit again, did you? Yeah, again. <laughs> ah, jeez, great to see you, boy. How are you? Fine. Now, we're going to need a bit of inspiration out here today. Mm, I'll give it. Good, because I'm down with about seven round players, so I need a... Oh, we need to get something out of you, so we do, all right? Oh. It's half the team, isn't it? Oh. And you're putting out as strong as they have. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, I'm telling you. But never say never, you know? So, are you looking forward to this? Yeah, I do want up to some pitch in town there now. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, if we could go down and spike their drinks, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> throw, throw a few slivers at them, you know? Yeah, well, if we could manage that maybe later on, so we will, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you're going for a goal, I don't think you should go high. Do you yeah. think? Off the ground. Yeah. Well, Michael is this, uh, he's 11 years old, he's from uh, Kerry, and he uh, he's a massive GAA fan, which um, he goes into it in the documentary, but how he kind of watches the game by... Um, Listen to the reactions of the crowd, you know. So obviously he was at a at a carry match. You know from the moans and groans and the cheers how uh, how Kerry are getting on, you know. And that's uh, there was an old Coca Cola ad years ago about a West Ham fan. He was blind, and I think he was going with his brother or something. But it showed a very similar kind of thing: how blind people watch watch football matches, you know. And it's just buzzing off the crowd, and you know, just just because they you know blind people. They hear it's not that their senses are better or anything like that, but they're more attuned in into listening, uh, far more than, than than the rest of us are, you know. And uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of scenes of that, and uh, it's it's great to, to, to kind of see the look on his face as he's concentrating on what's going on around him, so that he can he can read kind of what's going on going on in the field. You know, I thought that was that was, that was very interesting. Um. He's just crazy about GA, like absolutely mental. There's a scene where he's talking about the, the greatest football final was between Kerry and uh, and Dublin in the 70s. And he's just reading off stat after stat after stat, play, 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 play after play after play. I mean, just like what happened in a match. It's like <laughs> 11 years old and he's watching football matches from like, you know, 30, 30 something years into the last century. It's crazy, you know. Like for an 11 year old to have that. Obsession with sport and to have that, but that knowledge of it as well. I mean, Jesus, when I was 11 years old, I was putting one finger up my nose and the other finger up my arse, trying to get two of them to meet in the middle somewhere. <laughs> you know? 11, like, what, what the hell was I doing when I was 11? Was I still playing Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters and stuff like that? 11, maybe, I don't know. I don't remember being 11. I have no <laughs> recollection of being 11 at all. It's that long ago. But, um, it's just a lovely documentary, you know, the way it's, it's shot very well, uh, the story's done very well, just going from, from Michael meeting Davy on the Late Late Show and, and then going along, giving a team talk before uh, Wexford take on Tipperary in a league meeting. Now, it wasn't a meeting 
that was uh, on uh, just the, it aired the day after Wexford lost to Tipperary in the All Ireland, which is a different kind of competition. He goes down and he gives this uh, team talk to the Wexford. Can you imagine being the eleven and giving a team talk to a, a sports team? You know, it's be absolutely be nerve wracking. <laughs> If I was to do it now, <laughs> I'd be nerve wracked. You know what I mean? I'd just be in bits for days before, not being able to sleep with the worry of it. I'd, I'd, li- I'd want to do it. I'd like to do it, and I'd love doing it, and, 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 and I'd, I'd enjoy it while I'm doing it. But I'd still be nervous of making a mess of it. <laughs> you know, but then again, but what, what's so cool about, about the kid is, is, is just his confidence, and you can see that, look, it's a crappy disability. But you can see that he's just kind of cheery. And he just gets on with it. He says, right, sure, this is my lot. Uh, sure, he can't change it, so I'll just go with it. He goes into a bit about his uh, kind of support he has in school, how the, how the teachers are quite helpful to him. He has a special needs teacher as well who helps him um, helps him learn uh, Braille. He has a Braille typewriter in the classroom, stuff like that. A couple of strange scenes with his headmaster, all right, but it looks like he's putting on an act and trying to be all jovial and cool and all. But then I, I don't know, I'm just a bit, you know, because I, I told you before, I was a teacher and, and I don't think, I don't think teachers and students should or should be friends, you know what I mean? Like, you're a boss. It's not even a boss, but it's just like, you know, be, be professional in it. Like, there's no fun. It's like, if you're in your 40s or whatever, do you want to be made 11 year olds? It's a bit weird, like, you know? <laughs> um, uh, what else? Let's take another. Let's take another scene. He had this colourful, playful, a little bit naughty, out there attitude that on an, in another kid might have been a bit annoying. But when him was charming and pleasantly provocative and enough for you to want to know more. Do you think you get on well with him if you met him? No. Why not? Because he, he's from Six Mile Bridge and I'm not from Six Mile Bridge, so... <laughs> Well, do you, want, do you want to tell him yourself? Because he's here. He's not here. He is, yeah. We'll get him for you now. Davey! Davey Fitz, ladies and gentlemen! He's not here. This is Davey Fitz. He's about to sit beside you, Michael. He's not here. He right is right now. Look, see that? Feel, feel that? How is it going? Davey Fitz. How is it going? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So I was a bit doubtful that, it was he, that he was here, but he was there. Shocking to my surprise, he was there. Michael, what would you like to say to Davey Fitz? Uh... Uh, uh, <laughs> right, uh, um, take your time. So, I didn't prepare this, but uh, <laughs> when you get a shock, adrenaline, adrenaline is running in your head because you don't realize what is going on. You see, for a second, I forgot I was on live TV. For a second, I forgot I, forgot I was on live TV. Actually, for a second, I forgot that there was anybody actually there. Well, he's sitting right beside you, so mm-hmm. take a breath. How, and... how are you so passionate, like? <laughs> Well, I suppose, Michael, like you, I'm a fighter, right? And a I like, to, yeah, and I like to win. So I do. That's that's important to me. And it's like you wanting Kerry to get back and win again. Yeah. I'm the same. I want my teams to win, you know. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I have your book in the back, right? And I need you to sign it. Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> it was all going swimmingly, and there was exchanges of of books and pleasantries and laughs and. And the next thing, Davy turns around, and I, I'm not sure whether he had planned it, but it just felt like it was on the spot. And I'd like you to come, maybe speak to the team before we go out and have a chat with them. Um, if you'd be up for it, would you be up for something like that? Yeah. I'd love you to come. So is that a deal, is it? That's a deal. That's and a listen, deal. I have a small little Wexford top here that you'll have to wear on the deal. Yeah. Right? Is that fair? Yeah. 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 Uh, which I'll, I'll play I'll play at the end, and um, it's not really a spoiler or anything, but uh, uh, it's just this thing that he says of you know work hard and dream big and believe. He says something as well about um, you know Wexford. You need to you need to, you need to change your change your change your history, change your story. He says uh, I, don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I'll find out in the edit, and it's uh, because Wexford have always been known as kind of the bridesmaids, the runners up, and. Uh, this thing that like you, you just can do this. You just need to believe, and it's a wonderful thing to hear from someone who's, who's only eleven. You know, work hard and believe. And sure, I mean it's true for every aspect of life. You want to succeed at something, you got to work at it. 
but you also gotta believe that you're gonna make it. Like if you work hard at something and you and, and if you lose the confidence that you're gonna make it, then you're you know pissing against the wind, as we say at all. There's not really much point. You can work as hard uh, as you want, but if you don't think you're uh, making improvements or that you're stepping on to kind of the next level, well then there's not you're not gonna get anywhere. You know what I mean? You're just gonna continue to work harder without kind of progressing. You know, and uh, yeah, look, it's just, it's just, it's just it, 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 you'll hear it at, at the end of the podcast. I'll, I'll put in the speech, but wise words from from such a young man, and he he you can hear that he he gives the team uh, quite a bit of belief. Now, Wexford went out that match, and the first half took a bit of a hammering off Tipperary, as is taken. I'm not, from Wexford, so I know how <laughs> every Wexford match pretty much goes. Too many wides, too many easy fouls, and uh, too many misplaced passes. So this was typical, um, uh, the typical uh, uh, characteristic of the match. They went up four or five points down to Tipperary, and you know what? Over, over, over the last few years, Tipperary and Wexford really don't get on with each other, and Tipperary are quite a bullish, um, cocky, Shower so and so, they're not a nice team to play against. They're, um, you know, why do I from Wexford some bias? You know, plucky Wexford who are the underdog coming up against these, uh, these big towering dismissive rocks of Cashel, you know, kind of thing. They really aren't nice, they're not nice to play against, but for anyone, they're dirty. Then again, Penny had a fellow sent off there the other day against them, so maybe they aren't so dirty after all. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm totally biased, but um. Yeah, so uh, half time came and they were losing, and it looked like a typical Wexford match. You know, uh, glory in glory in, in in defeat, but it just wasn't going to happen that day. But they fight back. They fight back. And they end up winning the match with, with, with one of the final hooks of the ball uh, with a point and and they win. And there's a great scene between one of the players uh, at full time and Mike. He's like, "That that was for you. You know, thanks thanks for coming down. It me- meant a lot to us." Uh, for your your speech, and uh, what a thing to like. Okay, I don't think that the speech inspired them to dig deep uh, in in the last in the second half and and, and, and to rally and 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 to win. But if you're 11 years old and and you've given a, a pre match speech, inspiring speech to a, to a team, and then they've won, they can they just be walking on air. <laughs> you know, for years to come, like you know, um, uh, look, I do have to criticize criticize some parts of it though. Like it doesn't really, it doesn't go into Michael's condition at all. You no, know? it it never really says why he's blind or how he became blind or was he blind from birth? Or is he even blind? You know, I presume he is because he just types out the braille and stuff like that. But it just says he's visually impaired. It doesn't really go in like it shows his his mother and father. But it doesn't show any of, and, and his brother as well is in it, but just for a like, scene. I don't think he talks, I don't think he speaks. The father speaks, not in an interview. The mother's interview. The father is an interview, but he's holding Michael's hand and, and he's telling Michael the scores at the at the match. He's not interviewed. I think I think he probably should have been interviewed. Um, it's not really about them or their history. It just focuses on Michael, which from one aspect I get. Because this thing is, uh, you know, the story is uh, boy meets hero, boy, uh, hero likes boy, boy makes speech uh, at uh, hero's team, you know. But there's nothing, there's no background given into uh, who they are and uh, their kind of life in, in, in Kerry, you know. There's, there's a lot about the school, there's, there's too much about the school. It's like a 51 minute documentary and there's about. <sighs> Far too many scenes in the school. I mean, it's it's school is beaten to death. And about halfway through, you're like, yeah, I I get it. The school is supported. The school is good. He's happy in school. The school likes him. We get it. Just move on and show us something a bit more interesting, you know. Um, but look, yeah, it's it's other other than that, I can't really criticize a friend like that. He shot very well. Um, even the the added um commentary from. Oh God! What's his name? Joe or something? Uh, RT, RT. Oh shit! Let me see. R. 
Marty GA commentator. What the hell is his name? Not Marty Morris. He's the big head. Jerry Canning. Jerry Canning does, uh, usually does the, the, the hurling and football matches on uh, on RT when when they um, broadcast them. Now uh, they make it look like he was doing live um, commentary for this match, and obviously it wasn't because it's a league match, and it probably wasn't even shown on telly. But he he dubs in uh, commentary, and it, he does quite a convincing job of making it sound uh, like it was live. So fair play to him for 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 even thinking of that, like because they could have just showed footage. And could have done a voiceover, but instead they went with 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 going after the guy who usually does the matches on RT. So that was a nice touch. the The shots of the of the, of the matches are great. You know the the little bits between uh, Davy Fitz and Michael are just gold. Like they're fantastic. Like I said, they're at the start. You can see these. Um, you can see Davy just just loving this kid. You know, just being like a like a big brother or like a. Like a, like a not a father figure, but something like that. Just saying, like there's something about this kid who is just special, you know. And you get that in the, you definitely get that in the documentary. And it's all about him. He's hopefully he go on out to be some something, you know, because he could be a star. He's got the gift of the gab, for sure. He's a lovely kid, and he he can, hopefully he can, he can do anything, you know. I'd love to see more of him uh, on the telly. Was there anything else I wanted to mention? Uh, from it, yeah, it's just I mean, at the end, uh, at the end, I was <laughs> when Wexford um won it, and there's the uh, exchange between uh, uh, Michael and, and the player on the field, and then there's another little bit there by the end of this pump. And I was going, oh, Get up, out that, will you? I wanted to get my Wexford jersey, my hurl. I think I was watching it was about midnight or something, and I finished watching, I watching it with my mum, and uh, <laughs> I wanted to get my hurl. And go out and uh, just go out and hurl. Find someone on the street, show them what hurling is, freak him out, <laughs> and then beat them. <laughs> At hurling, not 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 beat them. You know, but you know what I mean. Um, if 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 you can find it on the internet, have a look for it. Okay, when Michael meant Davy, just a, a great, um, uplifting, heartwarming uh, sports documentary, and uh, I, I mean, you gotta have a very cold dead heart not to, and I have a cold dead heart you you know by now how cynical uh, I am when it comes to most uh, things but it's just it's just great it's such a great uh, documentary well done to everyone involved of course I have my criticisms as, as you've heard nothing is you know nothing's perfect but um yeah great just uh, check it out Look, I'm smiling from you. I'm thinking about it it's making me uh, very very happy but I'm, I think I'll go uh, watch it again even <laughs> you know um that's it uh I'll wrap up there short podcast about the documentary uh i'm planning on having another one tomorrow or the next day we'll see depends on the time but i should have another one this week and uh yeah good luck one to wexford sit down our lads sit down our lads please i have a few words to say my name is Michael O'Brien from the Kingdom of Kerry. I've come here today to talk to you. Now, lads, I have one message for you here today. And that's dream big. Dream big. Little did I think I'd be here today, standing in front of a county team, but I'm here. Some people said I'd never be here, but I'm here. There are two things you've got to do, is work and believe. Work and believe. We all know the hurlers who can talk a good game. Actions speak louder than words. Lads, you need to change your story and believe in that change. No more works for second place. No more works for try again. No more works for a hard attempt. You've got to change your story. Change your story. Now get out there today and show Tipperary who Wexford Hurling is. Dream big!